we're going to go into the sutta by identifying uh, two main elements, two main aspects of the sutta. Now, uh, I think um, the, uh, the flyer was given as boundless. So, for our metta, we should not have a limit, right? We all know that. But when it comes to the practice, the, there come some issues. So, we have to look at those aspects. So, I would like to introduce the Karaniya Metta Sutta according to two aspects. 15 skillful habits and the unlimited practice of metta. How many of you have ever heard about uh, uh, skillful habits that you can understand through the uh, metta sutta or karani metta sutta? Uh, this is a very important aspect of the metta sutta. I don't know how many of you know that. You might be chanting this every day, right? Uh, continuously, karaniya matta kusalena yantang santam padang apisamicha. But if you do not know the contents specifically, then I think uh, we have sadda, we have faith, we have uh, trust about uh, the teacher and the dhamma, we are still getting benefited. But if we know the meaning, I think that will really give us a uh, very good insight about the sutta. I consider this sutta has two elements, 15 skillful habits and the unlimited practice of metta, which you know already. Uh, these are the 15 skillful habits. Uh, they are none other than the uh, sutta's uh, verses. Let's go to metta sutta. How many verses are there in the metta sutta? So, we have, I would say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 stanzas, 10 verses that we can uh, see in the sutta. Uh, so, if you can look at this uh, third line of the first stanza up until the second line of the third stanza, these are the places where we find out these skillful habits. Let me tell you what is a skillful habit. Now, we know in Buddhism that we are supposed to practice kusalas. What is kusala? Wholesome activities. If you say actions, it only goes to the body part only. And there are the speech and the mind. So, they, you could say activities. Right? Activities can be classified as body, speech and the mind. Then mind, speech and the body, that is how it works. Because thoughts come out of uh, from your mind and they will become initially the speech and then turn into actions. Not necessarily, but this is the normal procedure. How do I say so? I say that, I say that based on the noble eightfold path. In the Noble Eightfold Path, this is the main path in Buddhism, the only path to uh, become a peaceful person. It says Samaditi, that means right view, Samma Sankapa, right intention, then Samma Vacha, right speech, right? Not Samma Kammanta. That means our speech arises right after the thoughts, intentions. Sometimes we mentally chat. We mentally chat. We don't. The, when you say language, you don't necessarily need to talk. We mentally chat within us. How many people kill other people, destroy at the level of uh, uh, mental chatting? Like uh, get uh, influenced by ill will. You are talking. You are talking mentally. It is not the mind. It could be a mental activity, but there is chatting, right? Uh, so that is why speech becomes the becomes the second before the uh, body. So that means we have what we call uh, uh, mind, speech, and body. So these are called activities. How can we turn them to skillful activities? Uh, if we take care of our 
mind out of ill will, covetousness and then the what you call uh, wrong view, then we take care of our skillful activities made by the mind. And if we take care of us from lying, then uh, slandering, then uh, hurtful speech and then gossiping, then we take care of our speech from the unskillful activities, we transform them into skillful activities based on the speech. And then if we take care of our body from killing, stealing and sexual misbehaving, then we take care of us from not creating uh, unwholesome activities based on the body. Now, all these are skillful activities. What could be the word then? When you are asked, kusala, kusala kammas are skillful activities. Then there are skillful thoughts, skillful speech, skillful action. Action and activity we are taking a little differently. Now, then how do we connect skillful habits to skillful activities? That is a good transition. In my understanding, in order for you to have a smooth, uh, flowing, consistent, kusala life, you need to practice skillful habits as much as you can even before your skillful activities. Now, these are only mentioned in one sutta. The sutta is Metta Sutta. I think many of uh, people, uh, many people do not understand this. Let us see what they are. Uh, Sakko, Uju, Suju, Suacho, Mudu, Anatimani, Santusaku, Subharu, Appakicho, Sal Lahuka Vutti, Santindriyo, Nipako, Appagabhu, Kulesu Ananugitto, Nacha Kuddang, Samachare, Kinchiyena, Vinyo Pareupodeyo. Taken the two lines as one uh, skillful habit. Let us go to the first one. Maybe a little bit of the translation, because you start from here. Karaniya matta kusalena yantang santam padang abhisamecha. How do we translate this? Yang tang santang padang abhisamecha. Those who want to look for the happiness. This uh, santam padam means happiness. You could call it uh, secular happiness and extra mundane happiness. Right? So, we have two types of happiness. Unfortunately, most people talk about that extra mundane happiness. That's happiness in the next life. We are talking about happiness in this life first. Otherwise, you are creating a spiritual crime. Huh? You are telling people something will happen in the future, but do this now. <laughs> right? We are talking the happiness here. As a consequence of that happiness, you will create that greater happiness, Nibbana or whatever the thing in this life or next life. So, yang tang santang padang abhisamicca, santang padam means happiness, santang padam means that uh, I would say uh, state of happiness, that state of happiness. Those who want to pursue, maybe enter into that state of happiness, karaniyang atta kusalena, uh, <coughs> that person should practice karaniya means kind of a should should practice certain kusala habits certain kusala habits there you see what they are starting from the third line of the first answer uh, sakko here now this is that sakko sakko then uju suju suacho chas uh, suacho then mudu anatimani santusako Subharu, Appakicho, Sallahuka Bhutti, Santindriyo, Nipako, Appagabhu, Kulesu Ananugitu. Then, this, these two lines. Nacha Kuddang Samachari Kinchi Yena Vinyu Pare Upavadeyo. Nacha. What are Cha? You see Cha, Cha here. What are they? Prepositions. Prepositions. Right? These are prepositions. Uh, that means uh, 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 Santusako and Subaru. Ch. And in English we call N. 
uh, then you see it uh, everywhere so it's, it's, it's interesting and uh, easy for you to learn some Pali otherwise you won't learn Dhamma anytime soon <laughs> some little Pali is important not that higher grammar because you don't need to learn grammar uh, unless you are an academician right but you need some some Pali to set your foot in the Dhamma right don't only go by the translations translations can be wrong because Buddha never spoke in English isn't it did he he never so then you are following somebody's translation somebody's maybe a Western translation maybe an Eastern translation maybe a cultural translation translations are good but we have to check whether this represents in that particular language all right now you know kind of a background after these 15 at this point the rest is from Sukinova Kemino Honto up until the end I think this side the Tin Chanupagama Silavat side uh, it's about how to practice unlimited loving kindness unlimited now people call unconditional yes unconditional and unlimited I would say 